Okay, the graphs of x cubed, x to the fourth, and x to the one-third power are given here. We want to identify if 0, 0 is going to be an inflection point on any of these graphs. Then we'll talk about how exactly we can find exactly where an inflection point can occur and do it algebraically without looking at a graph. All right, so let's take a look at x cubed's graph on the left-hand side first. On the left of the origin, I would refer to that as being concave down. So I'm going to put it a little negative here, meaning the second derivative would be negative on the left-hand side. Um, it looks like the top of an umbrella, kind of a weird-looking umbrella in this case. But on the right-hand side of the origin, as we look at the red graph, I would refer to this as concave up because it's like the bottom of a bowl. All right, because the uh, concavity change from concave down to concave up, this goes as an inflection point. So we'd answer yes, this one is going to be an inflection point at the origin 0, 0. On x to the fourth graph, looking at the left hand side, this is concave up, like the bottom of a bowl. Concave up on the right hand side as well. Because that did not change concavity, we'd have to answer no, that's not an inflection point. For x to the one third on the right hand side, um, to the left of the origin, I would refer to this as being, we think, concave up, because it's like the bottom of a bowl, whereas it's concave down on the right hand side. It's a weird looking umbrella, but the top of an umbrella basically on that side. Because the concavity changed, yes, this is going to be an inflection point. Next, let's think about how to algebraically figure out if it's going to be an inflection point or not. So, uh, I'm not going to do all three of these, but let's take a look at g of x. To figure out um, algebraically whether this is going to be an inflection point or not, what I'm going to do is get the second derivative. To get the second derivative, I first need to find the first derivative. So g prime of x, we're just going to use our power rule, bring the exponent down, reduce the exponent by 1. Next, I want to find the second derivative, so that means take the derivative of the derivative. Again, the power rule is very helpful here. Bring the exponent down, this time multiply it by 4. So 4 times 3 makes 12. Reduce the exponent by 1. Now, inflection points can occur whenever the second derivative is equal to 0 or undefined. So let's try setting this equal to 0 and solving down. So if we divide both sides by 12, That'll isolate the x squared, and we'll get x squared equals 0, applying a square root to both sides. And we don't really need a plus and minus because it's just um, the square root of 0 is just going to be 0. Positive 0 and negative 0 are equivalent. Next, what I'm going to go ahead and do is put that 0, that x value, on a number line. And I want to test one value to the left of 0. So any negative number, say negative 5, and any positive number, one number in each section of this number line. Where I'm going to test this is into the second derivative. So g double prime of negative 5 is 12 times negative 5 squared, which is going to be 12 times positive 25, which is going to be a positive number. That's the big thing that I care about is whether it's positive or negative, not so much the specific number that comes out. Let's plug in positive 5 also. So evaluating g double prime of positive 5, that's again 12 times 5 quantity squared, which would be 12 times positive 25. Two positive numbers are going to make a positive overall value. So the second derivative is positive on the left, meaning concave up, and positive on the right, also meaning concave up. And we see that in our graph here that the concavity did not change. It went from concave up to concave up on either side. Let's next try it with h of x. So h of x, that x to the one-third power, let's find its first derivative. So power rule, we bring the one-third down, we reduce the exponent by one. So remember this is going to be one-third minus one makes negative two-thirds. Next, we want to find the second derivative of h. So power rule again, we're going to bring down the exponent, multiply it by the one-third out in front this time, so negative two-ninths, and then reduce the exponent by one. We have negative two-thirds minus one. Negative two-thirds minus three-thirds is negative five-thirds. Now I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this 
So you can see this with a positive exponent. So the negative 2 stays in our numerator, the 9's in our denominator, but we can move that x to the negative 5, uh, 5 thirds down in the denominator and make it a positive exponent. Now this means the same thing as with a radical, you could say that's the cube root of x to the fifth, or you're allowed to put that 5 on the outside. Now that's going to be undefined if we were to plug in an x value of 0 right here. Plugging in 0 for that x value is going to make the denominator equal 0. Therefore, the second derivative would be undefined at that value. So that's the value I'm going to put on my number line. And that's the only value that would either make the second derivative equal 0 or be undefined. All right, so let's test one value to the left. So maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe negative 8 and one value to the right, maybe a positive 8. Now why I'm choosing 8 and negative 8 is because I have a cube root involved. We could just as easily have picked like negative 1 or positive 1 because I would want to pick those because choosing a perfect cube is going to help us as far as simplicity goes. Let's actually go negative 1 and positive 1. So evaluating that, h double prime of negative 1, you're going to get negative 2 over 9 times the cube root of negative 1 raised to the fifth power. So that works out being negative 2 over 9 times the cube root of negative 1 is going to be negative 1 raised to the fifth power. So negative 2 over 9 times, well 1 times 1 is always a, a 1, but this time we have 5 copies of a negative multiplied together. So 5 copies, an odd number, is going to make negative 1. So overall, this is going to be a positive, after we work out a negative in the numerator and a negative in the denominator, doing that division will make that positive or concave up from negative infinity to 0 for this graph. Let's do something similar with the 1. So we're going to evaluate h double prime of positive 1, which will be negative 2 over 9 times the cube root of 1. That's all going to be raised to the fifth power. So negative 2 over 9 times the cube root of 1 works out to be 1 to the fifth power. So negative 2 over 9 times 1. This time we have a negative in the numerator and a positive in the denominator. As you do that division, it's going to work out to be an overall negative result, which is really what we care about instead of the fact that it comes out with negative 2 ninths. All right, so what that tells us is we went from concave up on the left side to concave down on the right side. Well, our concavity changed. Therefore, just like our graph shows up above, we have an inflection point at the origin, in this case, 0, 0. All right, I hope this helps out as you want to know how to algebraically tell if you have an inflection point. Remember, it's find the second derivative. Figure out when the second derivative is going to equal 0 or be undefined. Put that, that value or those values on a number line. And then test um, in each section of the number line, like to the left and to the right of each one of those values. All you care about is positive or negative. If the concavity changes from positive to negative or vice versa, then you're going to have an inflection point. Hope this helps out. Good luck as you're working on them.